Hey everybody, welcome to Mrs. Clemens' Flipped Lessons, and this is part three of our Progressive Reform Begins Flipped Lesson. And of course, right now I'm super psyched because we are going to be talking about the three progressive presidents. So let's get started. So our first one, and my super favorite one, is Theodore Roosevelt. Um, and he has a couple things going for him. First, he is our youngest person to become president. It's not in the regions, but it's just super cool. He's our youngest person to become president. Um, at 42 years of age, he became president after William McKinley was assassinated. So it's not really a happy way to become president, but um, it is pretty cool that he's our youngest person to become president. And so he becomes president, and he's our first progressive president. And remember, we've been talking a lot about progressivism and how important it is um, for reform. And so here he is. He's young, and he's energetic, and here he is uh, with all of his kids. Um, and he is ready to make some changes. So we're going to talk about some of these changes that he's working on making. And so obviously, he's got a lot of achievements. So one of the first things he's doing is he's trying to protect consumers. So that's what we are. We're consumers. We're people that buy things. So um, after reading things like Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, um, he is definitely looking at th passing things like the Pure Food and Drug Act and the Meat Inspection Act, which is really important. We want to know what we're eating and drinking and what we're putting in our food. Um, he's also looking at regulating business because we talked a lot about this when we were talking about the Gilded Age and um, how there's all these monopolies. And so um, we had talked about how they had created the Interstate Commerce Commission and how it really wasn't effective. And so he's working on trying to make it actually be more effective, having the Interstate Commerce Commission actually regulate um, the railroads so that they won't change their rates based on who's going to be using the railroads, trying to help out the farmers um, so that they're not accepting bribes, so that they're setting maximum rates, making things a lot better. So we have our first of the multiple choice questions for part three. And so remember, you can always go back and look at your notes. So it says here, the passage of the Pure Food and Drug Act and the Meat Inspection Act illustrate um, the federal government's commitment to, one, environmental conservation, two, workers' rights, three, business competition, or four, consumer protection. All right. So continuing on with T Teddy Roosevelt, um, other achievements that he has, trust busting. And so he became known as the trust buster. And part of the thing with him is that he saw a difference. He didn't bust all the trusts. He didn't get rid of all the monopolies. But he saw a difference between what he thought were good trusts that were valuable to the economy and things that were bad trusts. And so he broke up things that were bad trusts. And so one of the companies that he saw as a bad trust was the Northern Securities Company. And so as a result, this ended up becoming um, a Supreme Court case, which is one that is definitely a good one to know for the regions. So Northern Securities versus the United States um, orders it to be broken up. And it's um, using the Sherman Antitrust Act, which is one that we had talked about before as not being effective in the late 1800s. And now he's helping it to actually be effective. And so as time goes on, other monopolies are broken up too, like the beef, oil, tobacco. So that's really great. That's progressive. It's moving on. So we have our next multiple choice question. Main purpose of President Theodore Roosevelt's trust busting policies was to, one, reduce corruption in government. Two, save the nation's banks. Three, encourage competition in business. Or four, end strikes by labor unions. And remember, you can always go back and look at your notes. All right. So other things that Te Teddy Roosevelt's working on is also improving labor conditions. Remember, there's a reason why he's a great president. He's got a lot of things he's working on. So one of the things he's doing um, as we talked about before, in the late 1800s, we have all these strikes that are going on. And remember, one of the things we had said was that 
the labor unions are striking and there's all this violence, but what was happening was the government was coming in and was putting down the strikes. Well, what's happening with Theodore Roosevelt is instead of him just coming in and sending in the military and putting down the strikes, is he's actually working together with labor and he actually is kind of doing, um, making labor and the businesses work together to figure out their, their issues. And one of the examples is the coal strike where he says, listen, I'm going to send in troops and support the union um, and helps them out. And that's a really great example of changing um, changing things from how they had been in the late 1800s. He's also working to get accident insurance for workers. So if you get your arm lopped off instead of just losing your job um, and just going around being a beggar, now you're actually going to maybe get some accident insurance get, so you're taken care of. Um, trying to reduce working hours. So another Supreme Court case that helps out is Mueller versus Oregon. So that ruled that we could limit working hours for women. Uh, they didn't necessarily work out for <laughs> reducing working hours for men. Uh, so important to <laughs> help out the women, but not the men. Uh, and also he was huge for conservation. Conservation, we're talking about environmentalism, trying to preserve the environment for future generations. And so he set aside many acres of land that can never, ever be developed. So a whole lot of different places, but particularly um, areas around Yellowstone National Park and Yosemite National Park. So here you can see some of the national parks that he set aside. And if you ever get the chance to go see them, they are gorgeous. I've been to Yellowstone, haven't been to Yosemite yet. Hope to get there. All right, so here's our next multiple choice question. Which statement best summarizes President Theodore Roosevelt's view, views about conservation? One, environmental issues are best decided by the private sector. Two, unlimited access to natural resources is the key to business growth. Three, wilderness areas and their resources should be protected for the public good. Or four, decisions about the use of natural resources should be left to the states. All right, so our next president, who is a progressive president, was William Howard Taft. Now, he was the person that was picked by Teddy Roosevelt to be his successor. Um, and so... Teddy Roosevelt wasn't necessarily happy with him, although he did bust double the trusts as Roosevelt. Now he ends up splitting the Republican Party because Teddy Roosevelt comes back and is saying, uh, I'm not happy with you. I'm going to run for president again. And so that's what ends up happening in the election of 1912. You end up getting three people running for president. So Taft runs for re-election as a Republican. We get a new guy on the scene. We get, as a Democrat, Woodrow Wilson. And then Teddy Roosevelt is running again, even though he had been retired as president. And he runs as a progressive. But um, <laughs> what happens is a reporter asks him, hey, how do you feel running for president again? And he says, oh, I'm happier than a bull moose. So it becomes known as the bull moose party. So, yeah, be happy like a bull moose, guys. All right, so who ends up winning? Um, because, let's just go back again. Um, Teddy Roosevelt goes, and because basically Teddy Roosevelt and Taft are both Republicans, they end up splitting the vote, and so Woodrow Wilson ends up winning. Spoiler alert there. All right, so Woodrow Wilson ends up winning. So let's talk about him. He's our third progressive president. So yes, you need to know there are three progressive presidents, Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson. All right, so he does a bunch of different reforms too. So we've got some financial reforms. Um, he lowers the tariff um, with this thing called the Underwood Tariff Act. Um, also, we end up getting the graduated income tax, which is actually an amendment to the Constitution. Um, the idea is that the more you make, the more you're taxed. So the less you make, the less you're taxed. Um, the other thing that they put into place now, as you guys know, we've talked a lot about the National Bank, that Alexander Hamilton started the bank, then Andrew Jackson, actually Thomas Jefferson wanted to get rid of the bank, then Andrew Jackson wanted to get rid of the bank. The bank goes back and forth and back and forth. The Federal Reserve is today our national banking system. 
um, and it regulates our flow of money. So under Woodrow Wilson, they start the Federal Reserve System. And so today, the way that regulates our flow of money is by raising and lowering interest rates. Um, he also regulates business. So we had talked about the Sherman Antitrust Act from the late 1800s. He passes the Clayton Antitrust Act. It's sort of like the Sherman Antitrust Act 2.0. Um, it, it does things just a little bit better. Uh, other reforms that he passes um, or helps to get passed during his presidency, even better child labor laws, low interest loans for farmers, and the 17th Amendment, which um, allows for the direct election of senators. So instead of state legislatures electing senators, they're directly elected by the people. So our next multiple choice question is the Clayton Antitrust Act was passed to, one, restore business competition, two, end stock market speculation, or three, prosecute corrupt labor unions, or four, break up city political um, party machines. And then we actually have our fifth and final multiple choice question. A belief shared by Presidents Theodore Roosevelt, William Taft, and Woodrow Wilson is that the federal government should, one, allow the free enterprise system to work without regulation, two, use its power to regulate unfair business practices, three, provide jobs for unemployed workers, or four, support unions in the labor management disputes. Alrighty, guys, that is it for the progressive era. Tune in again when we talk about imperialism. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.